My name is Chris Coverdale from Make Wars History. We're at the Royal Courts of Justice in the Strand and we have just had a judicial review or an application for a judicial review to the High Court turned down by the judges. Now, what we were aiming to do was to appeal against the DPP's decision, that's the Director of Public Prosecution's decision, to drop the criminal proceedings against Tony Blair, Jack Straw, Jeff Hoon, Gordon Brown and other members of the British government for the crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity and other war crimes committed against the Iraqi and Afghan people. The judges claim yet again that it is non-justiciable, that this is a matter of war and it is not something for the courts to decide. That is in complete opposition to the case pleaded this morning, where we're saying that we have given detailed evidence to the Crown Prosecution Service about the crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes taking place in Iraq. We now know that a million people have been killed and that includes perhaps 30,000, 300,000 children have died as a direct result of our intervention in their uh, countries. And we in Make Wars History are determined to ensure that those responsible for the worst criminal offences known to mankind are held to account for those decisions in a court of law. Unfortunately, the British justice system, we can't find a single judge, prosecutor or police officer who is willing to enforce the laws of war. So we are now determined to take a number of steps to take this forward. Very briefly, the uh, steps that can be taken are to go to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Uh, under the Rome Statute, the legislation on genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes that is universal in 108 nations, we are able to take a case to the International Criminal Court if our government proves unwilling or unable to bring proceedings themselves. And because they have refused for six years to bring any case to court for any of the killings, arbitrary killings that are taking place, we now have enough evidence to go to the International Criminal Court and ask them to start a case to prosecute Blair, Brown and all the rest of our war criminal ministers for the crimes they've committed in Iraq and Afghanistan. There are four things that every individual can do to get involved in holding our government to account for its crimes. The first one is reporting the crimes to the police. In law, if someone commits a crime and you observe it, you have a duty to report that crime to the police. So anybody, anywhere, can download the, uh, the evidence of genocide from our website, and take it into their local police station, accusing their local MPs of taking part in genocide. Now, if you take that into the police, they have a duty to investigate the case, investigate the crimes, and arrest any offenders they come up with. So they have a duty that you pass on them to them the duty to arrest and prosecute our government ministers. Now that's not quite as easy as it sounds because of the corruption in the uh, police forces in this country. Uh, we have not yet found a single police officer, prosecutor or judge who is willing to enforce the laws of war. But with the help of the public around every possible avenue in Britain, we may be able to find somewhere a prosecutor, a police officer, or a judge who is willing to move the case forward and to prosecute the crime of genocide. 
So that's the first thing everyone can get involved in, is reporting the crimes to the police. The second thing is refusing to pay tax. Uh, what we're encouraging is a lawful tax refusal, rebellion. Under the laws of war, it is a criminal offence for taxpayers to contribute to genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. And all the monies that you hand over to your government, which they use to kill innocent Iraqi men, women and children, is unlawful. And so by handing it over to the government, you are committing a crime of conduct ancillary to genocide. You are aiding and abetting the criminal offences of our government. Therefore, you have a legal duty to refuse to hand over tax. So that's the second thing. So if you just write to your employers and write to your local tax collector, telling them that you have a legal duty to refuse to pay tax, if enough of us do this, then the money will stop flowing into the treasury and the war will come to an end and we can then hold the war criminals to account in court for what they've done. The third thing that we can do is to educate people about the laws of war. Our government has kept us in ignorance of the laws of war for 60 years. There isn't a single MP, peer or a law enforcement officer anywhere in Britain who knows and understands the laws of prohibiting war. So every time they tell us that it is legal and lawful to go to war, contradict them. It is never lawful to wage a war of aggression. The only time in law when you can use armed force is in self-defense after you have been attacked. And everyone knows that no Iraqi or Afghan has ever attempted to attack us in this country. So that's what you can do to help. Finally, you can approach your MP. It is their job and their responsibility to govern this country. There are 1,500 people, MPs and peers, with the responsibility for taking us to war. Now, I know only uh, 412 of them voted in favor of war. However, if an MP doesn't agree with the actions of the British government, then they should resign from their seat. And I know of no MP who has ever resigned from their seat in Parliament. They're still taking the money from us to do the job of governing the country. And whilst they do that, they are responsible in law for the crimes of the British government. So, visit your MP, give them a copy of the report, which lays out in detail how they are involved in genocide and ask them what are they doing. We wrote to every MP on March the 20th and there's the details of that letter in, the, in this document and you can hold them to account for their actions to stop the killing. We asked them to take action to stop the killing of innocent children. Not one of them so far has done anything. It's up to us to hold our MPs to account for their crimes. And if they don't do something now, then report them to the police for genocide. Okay, so that's briefly the four things that everybody can get involved in. They're very simple, straightforward actions. And if we together do it, we will stop the killing that's taking place. We're just having a revamp of the website, but on the Make Wars History website, so that's makewarshistory.org.uk, you can download a number of the documents to send to the taxman, to uh, send to the Chancellor of the Exchequer. You can download copies of the report, copies of the letters we've sent to MPs, and lots of other material. And we will be putting over up over the next two weeks a lot more of that material for you to use. So that's really the source material. Also, obviously, you have plenty of source material from the uh, newspapers and television and video reports over the last six years of the horrors that have gone on in Iraq and Afghanistan. Remember that everything that the British government has done in relation to Afghanistan and Iraq 
is a criminal offence under the most important laws the world has ever signed. So it all provides evidence that can be used against them in court. It's likely to happen again. The real issue is that we went in there illegally, unlawfully. We have murdered a million people, 300,000 of them are children, and somebody must answer for those crimes. They are the worst crimes it is possible to commit, and they think they can just go in there, do their worst, and get, get out and uh, remain uh, unaffected. We must show them that's absolutely not the case. There are far too many MPs, peers, law enforcement officers, and even the Queen has no right to kill a child and we need to pursue them until their graves to answer for what they've done in court.